blessing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You position. In other words, you've got something to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, God is a covenant God. Yes. Right. He is the testator of the new covenant. When I find out my God was a covenant God, it changed my world. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. See so y'all ready for another round? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, I enjoy playing yes. music with you folks. I stay around here, I'll learn something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. My, 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 my. It does rub off. <laughs> it does. It does. It rubs off. That anointing, that spirit, that unjunct. You know, Moses anointed everything and everybody that went in that tabernacle. There's a reason for that. There's a reason when Samuel was down there and David joined himself and Saul sent his servants and everyone that got close to the mantle of the prophet in his stead, in his order, what happened? They began to prophesy. Old Saul got real confused about that matter and he sent another one and another and finally he went down them himself, King Saul, and he laid naked and prophesied all night <coughs> to the point they said, is Saul among the prophets? Let me tell you what, when we join together come on, in agreement, all right, we're not trying to be guy like you. None, none of that. We all operate in our office. God's place is in the bodies that please Him. Yes. Hey, He chose you. You didn't choose Amen. Him. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Oh. Amen. It's all about Him. Yes. And doing His will. I thank God. <laughs> For the victory, victory. Okay, if you would stand up briefly, we're going to give a verse and pray. Let y'all sit back down. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, Thank my, you, my, Jesus. my, my, my. Tears, tears. Thank Bless you. Lord. Whoa! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 27. <laughs> Thank you. By faith. Talking about old Moses. Mm -hmm. He forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Mm -hmm. I notice this. For he endured. As see him who is invisible. Let them want you to pray, sister. God bless you. Pray. Father, we thank you for this word this evening. Let it be engrafted in our hearts and bring it back to our remembrance as it's needed, Father God. And we bless the man of God today and lift him up, Father God, to you, to use him, work to will in him, to do of your good pleasure, Father God. And, uh, change us from glory to glory by your word in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let the saints be seated. Again, we appreciate the food, the hospitality. Yes. Appreciate that. <coughs> appreciate that. Yes. I appreciate that. <coughs> By faith, through faith, as a result of faith, <laughs> he forsook something. He forsook it. <laughs> what did he say? At the, the verse was Hebrews 11, 27. By faith, through faith, as a result of faith, because of faith, he forsook. What was in Egypt? There were treasures. It was a world empire. Moses had it good. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, but he had a burning bush. Experience. Experience. His world changed. Oh, Mo wasn't the same anymore. <laughs> you hear the voice of God. People say, well, we know that God don't speak anymore. And I wasn't too long ago. I heard there ain't no apostles anymore. They had a beginning, uh, shall we say, office. But that is no longer the case. I mean, oh. How sad. The position some people take. <laughs> They forsake sometimes their own mercy by twisting the word of God or, or selecting a position and adapting it. Hallelujah. That word needs to be rightly divided. Line on line, precept upon precept. Right. So back. Oh, there was in Egypt. What's in your Egypt? What's 
there that you need? What's there that's going to benefit you towards the kingdom and fulfilling your calling and purpose of God? Oh, there is bondage there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is this idolatry there. Mm -hmm. Moses got to the point. The Bible said the wicked flee when no man pursue it. <coughs> but the righteous are what, Pastor? Bold as a lion. Yes. Now think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you had a pet lion up here and there was a <laughs> kitty cat coming to that lion, I'd say, don't you dare hurt my lion. That's not necessary. It ain't going to be that way. The Bible says, The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? <coughs> he got beyond fear. <coughs> we haven't received a spirit of fear, no, but a power yeah. and love and a yeah. sound mind. It isn't that we don't fear God. There's there's some folks that that doesn't factor in. You've got to differentiate between the two. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I'll guarantee you there's some demonstrations and measures of the Spirit that are very frightening. I've been very frightened in the presence of God. I got saved through fear. Better believe it. But Moses did not fear the wrath, the opposition, and the confrontation against the king. Now, it's easy to stand up and testify in church. But when you're dealing with rulers, kings, people in governmental authority that can take your head, <coughs> you got to remember this, saints, when they ask you for a testimony, that the Holy Ghost will give you a mouth and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gain, say, nor resist. Remember that. God wants you to say something. He can give you the unction to declare it. Now, how did Moses do all that? How did he, how was he sustained during the course of time? He endured, now here's, here's one aspect of it, as seeing him who is invisible. Now we know God's a spirit, God is love, but he's also invisible. Can anybody see the manifestation exhibition of the Holy Ghost? You can see the results of it, but can you see him? Now we do know that there were theophanies that appeared before Moses, and I remember the occasion in the tabernacle where Miriam and Aaron were a little bit <laughs> upset with Moses. He came down and they had a little... Discussion And Mary went away leprous, but not forever. Just outside the camp for a week. That was all reconciled. Things got smoothed out and they went on their way. But Moses knew God face to face. Now like normally the prophets got to give him a dream or a vision, but not in Moses' case. He said, I'm going to speak plain to you. Right, I speak plain. Let me tell you what, when, when, when he and the Spirit of Truth is coming, he's going to guide you in all truth. Now, whether you're willing to go or not, whether you position yourself, you've got to be some intentional with God. Yes. I intentionally do things yes. regarding him. Regarding him. Now, let's look at that word forsook. You've got to leave it behind. <coughs> Got to leave things behind sometimes. Everybody can't go where you're going, where God's directing you. To abandon some things. Now think about that. But the key word we want to touch on this verse is endure. To endure. Yeah. Endure. Endure. Never forget, I went out for deputy sheriff. When I was 43, I don't know why I did it. I didn't have law enforcement uh, experience, but they put the ad in the paper. I was, got laid off, and I said, hey, I'm going to go out and try out. But I did a little training because I used to run, and you had to do so much weight. You had to do, you had to run a mile and a half in like, I think, nine minutes. You had to be pretty good shape to pass that test. Mm -hmm. And I was out there on the track run. I was the oldest guy out there. And I'm 
seen these younger guys just passing out and falling down. They were done. Now, there's others that finished the race, others that finished the time frame, but they had to do so many setups and so much time, they had to do so much weight, bench pressing, you had to take a test. The point. I knew what was coming and I prepared. Now, other people prepared, some didn't. Some didn't. I used to run quite a bit. So it, it came back to me. But when you endure, there's a word that the Hebrew goes down into transposed, meaning to be strong. To be strong in the Lord. The Bible said, let the weak say, I am strong. But you get to the point where you are in the strong yes. status and category. You can be strong. In the Lord and in the power of might, strong, able to endure, <coughs> able to be more than a conqueror. Amen. But you've got to get it here, yep. you've got to get it here, and you've got to get it here. <coughs> oh, my, 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 my. Now that word transpose to change your relative position. Ooh, it goes on to say to reproduce the word transpose is in another key. Sometimes I heard Daryl say we do it in key A. Well, he could have done that in G. That would have been transposing it. Or went to C, whatever. Or G, like our sister did earlier. <coughs> she went from C. That's transpose. But one of those means is to transform. Right, right. When you're transformed, by the renewing of your mind, as you present your bodies, oh, I was going through one of my noble times with God. I was going to be so noble. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I just, I'm willing to lay my life down, and I think we should be able to. He owns us. We're bought. And I said, Oh, Lord, I'm willing to do this, this, and this. And He said, How many times do you think? How many times can you offer me that sacrifice? It took me a minute. I want to be careful. I said, one time? That's it. Now what I want, let me tell you what I want. It said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now they don't have to be impossible. What he meant by that, he wants me to present myself to him every day. Mm -hmm. I, I tread his course. I enter his gates with thanksgiving. One protocol. You get more from the king. Mm -hmm. I enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what a difference. Mm -hmm. Get behind that veil. Access to the mercy seat. I'm seated together. Now, how does he do that? Well, he says we are. I don't know, understand how fiber optic works, but I know you can put a lot of signals through that fiber and it don't get mixed up and intertwined. I believe when he says we're seated positionally in Christ Jesus in heavenly places and we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. What does that consist of? A lot. Not one little thing, not one little category, not one little area. Bunch! Bunch! So to transform, sometimes we've even got to alter our positions where it conforms to His will. <coughs> I have a lot of people say, well, who knows what the will of God? I said, here's the will of God right here. We know this. This is a sure word of prophecy. Not that we don't believe in the prophetic, the gifts of the Spirit, the office, so on. But oh, when he told me I, I need to present myself before the Lord daily. So that don't mean I start out, God, I need this. God, I need this. Lord, I need this. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now maybe a little child Understandably, I've seen children come up and grab the daddy that was preaching or the mom or whatever. And no one's going to begrudge that. But you need to know how to enter in the court. You want to get more, don't you? You need more. 
We all need more. And what happens when his presence comes on the scene? We begin to absorb. And he begins to take things as we cast our care on him. But if you don't cast it, if you bear it, oh, I don't want to get into that other subject. But he endured. The key word is enduring. But we got to see some things in order to endure. That word seeing is you got to discern clearly. You got to know what he's saying. You got to put yourself in a position to hear. Now, if you don't believe you can hear from the Lord, then you got a problem. Now, there's people that said, well, this is what God gives us, and I will agree with them. But this word records how the Spirit spoke to various individuals at times, yes. from deacons to apostles to evangelists, and the everyday person spoke to Mary. When you hear from God, when you are directed by the Holy Ghost, you have an edge against every unbeliever that's out there. Not that we're in competition with them. But we're in the kingdom of Christ. We've been baptized into the body of Christ. We've been translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Didn't he say in John 3, except you uh, be born again, you can't see the kingdom. Verse 5, you can't enter unless you're born of water and spirit. We want to be in position, <laughs> listen to me, to inherit the kingdom. you got to see things. you got to see things. you got to discern it. And then you got to attend to what you pick up. The other day, I'm an example. We transport, as I said, veterans. And I was in John Cochran Hospital, a busy place. Oh my, for the VA, I mean, people come in from all around into St. Louis, Missouri. Been there lots of times. And I usually, when I'm there, when you're driving, you're transporting patients, you better think about the bathroom, you better think about your preparation, so when you get out there and drive, you don't have to make any unnecessary stops. Mm -hmm. Well, I just got to go to the bathroom in front of me. I don't know, say, don't go to that bathroom, you go to the other bathroom. <laughs> I don't know, they go to that bathroom, it's smaller, it's busy, blah, blah, blah. Go there. Okay, Lord. Well, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't run into the individual that he wanted me to run into. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, that I would realize, what does that matter? Well, it matters if God spoke to me to do it. He had purpose in it, and I had to comply in order to achieve anything. Mm -hmm. God wanted me to see this person. I didn't know who it was. I just obeyed what the Spirit. I, I go on and on and on and on and on about how God will direct you. Now, we know that God endures. Psalms 102 and 26 says, They shall perish. A reference to God here in the psalm. But thou shalt endure. God is going is already the eternal self-existent one. He is before all things. By him all things consist. Without him was not anything <coughs> made that was made. He endures. We're going to take on and be fashioned like into his glorious body, saints. Oh, what a glorious day. Yes. What a glorious day. But in the meanwhile, we got to learn to endure. Mm -hmm. Not to just finish the race, but finish your course cool. and finish the yeah. race strong. Yeah. Yeah. Take somebody with you. Come on. Amen. Come on. Take somebody with you. That's right. the key. <coughs> Oh, we're going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Yes. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. Yes. You ever been in a service where the glory was so thick mm -hmm. that nobody could do anything? Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that uh, an exhilaration, yes. to say the least? <coughs> Hallelujah. But how is one thing to present what we need to do, but how do you accomplish what we need to do. Well, number one, after we come to God, a rooting is required. We've got to be rooted, grounded, and settled in the truth. We've got to become outfitted for the long haul. This is a long haul. Eternity is a long time. <laughs> now, we have a pilgrimage here. We're sojourners and pilgrims, but I'm looking for a city yeah. who's builder come on. and maker is God. Amen. And we as saints of God 
we're going to have to endure one way as we don't get offended at things. What's preached, if it's valid, we're going to have to get over some things mm -hmm. that offend us. I'm going to tell you why. Mark 4 and 17, we're talking about, we mentioned in the other uh, sermon relating the parable of the sower. In Mark 17 relates this, that received the word but had no root. There's people that have an experience with God and that's a great and a glorious thing. And a person with an experience is not at the mercy of a person with an opinion. All right. All right. But in this case, says that they have no root in themselves, so endure, right. but for a time. Now, God didn't design that. He's decreeing and declaring what can happen if we're not wise and overcome this and pray ourselves through this. They only endure for a while. I don't want to ask you, but how many I know that's no longer serving the Master? We're believing for their reconciliation. We want to be open to their reconciliation. How many want I mean, the backsliders come back in? Yes. How many going to welcome them with open yeah. arms? Yeah. Are you going to say, ha! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if they were your sons and your daughters, wouldn't you want them to come in? Wouldn't you want them to be restored? Yes. Wouldn't you yes. want them to be renewed? Wouldn't you want them to be accepted and blessed and nourished? Yes. I would. Afterwards, now notice they endure before time, but afterwards, now notice what happens when affliction or persecution arise. Now notice this for the word's sake. By and by, what happened? It says immediately they're offended. I don't want anything that's in the scriptures to offend me. Nothing. I don't care how tough it is. Now, grant you this. We're the savor of life, and we're also the savor of death. Ministers of the gospel. I can kill you with the word. I can absolutely beat your head in. If the word is like a hammer, it's a two-edged sword. But I want to be the savor of life. I want to nurture the saints. I want to bless the saints. I want to encourage the strength. I want to help build you. I want to, I want to make a contribution to your edification and your growth and your purpose be fulfilled. That's my job. So they were offended because of some persecution. I've had people tell you, I like you better the way you used to be. <laughs> I've had them tell me that. Well, yeah, I said, that guy ain't on the scene any longer. Ooh. So we don't want to be seasonal or temporary. So we've got to be intentional. We also must permit. got to allow this. And that's some correction. we got to allow that. we got to, we got to take it. Remember we're in boot camp when some of you GIs was in here in boot camp. And that GI said, move it soldier, move it, move it. You didn't say, well, I don't feel like it. Sorry, right now. I didn't get enough sleep. <laughs> we need to learn as an individual member of the body of Christ to endure hardness. Not a hard heart, but hardness as a good soldier of Christ. We need whole Bible doctrine. We need every area thoroughly covered. We need to know what we believe and why we believe it. We need revelation and illumination because the time's going to come. Second Timothy 4 3, they're not going to endure sound doctrine. They just can't tolerate it. They can't endure it. Take it. Receive it. Let it work in you and work out of you what God wants to do with it. Don't let the system of the world deceive you and think you they come up with a better way or psychology or philosophy that will spoil you. It will rob. It will steal. It will kill you. And who's 
are responsible for that. What pastor is responsible to feed the flock? But it gets down to what you're going to allow. What you're going to put up with. What you're going to allow access to you. you you've got some choices you've got to make. And God will help you in those choices. But notice this in Hebrews 10 and 32. But I call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated. You know, for me to try to get someone that is unsaved without the Spirit of God, without the Word of God, and say, well, why don't you live like this? They are not, don't have the nature to do that. We've got to come into the divine nature. That's part of what our new birth is about. Oh, we've got to continue. The Bible says, he that it endures unto the end. Whatever our end, whenever our end is, there's an appointed time. We want to endure to them. You can endure. You are designed to do it. You are designed to overcome. You are designed to conquer. But you've got to get it here, here, and here. And then you've got to get it here. Oh, it makes a difference. James 5 and said, Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Yeah. You've heard the patience of Job. Oh, my goodness, I've heard people mention old Job so often, so much. He had one of the greatest series <coughs> of tests and trials of his man, no doubt. He was among the top in that category. But God multiplied it back to him, didn't he? He seen that the end of the Lord was very pitiful and of tender mercy. Now, at the present point where we're at, victory is accomplished. How many really want the victory? Yeah. Through the mindset of victory. Yes. Hebrews 6 and 15 said, After he patiently endured. Now let's get into some stuff we'll like. Mm -hmm. After he patiently endured, he obtained. Obtained healing. Obtained a job. Obtained opportunities. Obtained favor. The gambit. Said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partaker of the divine nature. And notice what happens as a result of that. And not being. Let me read that. Escape the corruption that is in the world of lust. <coughs> After you patiently. You begin to obtain promises easier, readily. You know who has? You know he that hath to him shall be given. You've heard of the haves and the haves not. You heard of that. And in the parable of the talents, there was the one that had the five and multiplied and doubled one that had the two, and the one that had the one, he was somewhat respectful of it. At least he wrapped it in a napkin and he buried it. At least he didn't throw it away. And he knew that the Lord was an austere man, that he reaped what that man should have sowed. But who was that talent given to? The one that had the five. To him that hath shall be given. Now, now, you may not like this. There's inertia with God. I've never had it so good. I'll be, I'll be frank and honest with you. I'll be 67 years old next month. I'm seeing God move in frightening proportions. I will put it like that, brother. Where are you taking us? Hey, I'm comfortable where I'm at. But you know, when God opens that door, friend, mm -hmm. Saint, you better move. Yes. You don't want to miss those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Even though I might not think I'm ready, you might not think I'm ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if God opens that door, you better follow through. And you better not tear it. Yes, that's right. 
When the Lord gets ready, you've got to move. So many people fail to receive because they won't move when the Holy Ghost is moving. Mm-hmm. You've got to take a prior burn. You've got to talk and beg and plead. 